to New Beginnings Christian Center. I'm Pastor Bill, uh, and uh, we just want to welcome you today. Um, hey, uh, we're going to be wrapping up our series. This, uh, this is part four of uh, Growing in Christ, uh, Becoming a Mature Christian. And today is all about justification. And uh, I pray that, that you're going to get a lot out of this. But, you know, uh, how many of you, like I said, I've been saying this a lot lately. How many of you would agree with me? that more than ever today, we need mature Christians. We need a church that is gonna operate in signs, miracles, and wonders. You know, the early church, I'm one of those guys, I don't believe that the gifts of the Spirit, the operation of miracles, uh, died with the early church. I am one uh, to tell you, and I will teach you, that the gifts of the Spirit are alive and well today. The problem is, uh, we're not taught enough of that. We're not, we're not shown how to, uh, how should I say, enter into that heavenly realm uh, so that as Jesus taught us to pray, thy will be done. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We've been given authority to call heaven down to earth. And uh, with that comes uh, signs, miracles, wonders, miraculous healings, uh, things that uh, where the supernatural becomes natural. Um, with that in mind, I'm dedicating this service today to, to not only a, a member of our congregation, but also a dear friend. His name is Robert, Robert Rocca, and uh, he's, he's in a battle for his life. He's been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and uh, we've been in contact every day and praying every day. We have intercessors praying for him, and I believe what the Word of God says, that the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And I know that of all of us that are praying, there's at least one righteous in the bunch. So, Lord, I'm, I'm praying that uh, one of us has that, uh, let, let's call it the silver bullet, the one that you're going to hear, Lord God, and you're going to hear from heaven, and you're going to heal Robert. Because uh, we believe in miracles. We believe you're still the, the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, and light in the darkness. So we're dedicating this, this whole service to him. Uh, this is Communion Sunday for us here. It's going to be the first Sunday of the new month. We're in September, and uh, he needs a miracle, but he's doing great. He's, you know what? He's fighting. He's up. He walks every morning. Uh, he's on pain management right now. They're, they uh, they want to start chemo on him, but there's a couple of things. His body's got to cooperate with a couple of things before they can start to make sure he's healthy and strong enough. So would you just agree with me that uh, he will be made strong? The body will come into alignment with the will of God, that he will be able to... I, I want to see a miracle for him. I want to see this. I know God still can. And, uh, you know, he is just praying up a storm. He's, he's reading his Bible. He's, uh, and him and his wife both. In fact, his wife is fasting for him. And a lot of us are fasting for him and doing what we can uh, for our part. And uh, we know that God, his desire is that he be healed. Uh, Jesus went to the cross and uh, the, the stripes that he took on his back and on his body. The Word of God says by His stripes, we were healed. So it's something that was already done. The, the price has been paid. So with that being said, I want to move on here because we've already talked about salvation. That's all the work that Jesus did. And Jesus did it all so that we can cross over that threshold and be saved, receive salvation. And it starts with a very simple prayer that uh, if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead, you're saved. And uh, that means you've got a ticket to heaven. Uh, but there's so much more. See, God has a plan and purpose for each and every one of our lives. And uh, he, he wants us to fulfill that, that, that purpose and that promise that he has. And uh, we, have, we were sent here with an assignment. Uh, we are here. Uh, we weren't sent. We're not, none of you out there that are listening or watching are an accident. Uh, it wasn't, you're not an oops. Come on, somebody. Um, you, you're not a mistake. You're not a, oh my goodness, we didn't plan this. It doesn't matter. You know, if God chose to give you life, he sent you here with a plan and a purpose because uh, it even says in Psalm 139, uh, he knew you before, uh, before you were even born. Uh, he had uh, every, every day of your life was, was ordained for you before one of them came to be. He knew you before you were knit together in your mother's womb in the secret place. Uh, and, and then he goes on to say in Jeremiah 29, 11, I, I know the plans I have for you. He says, the Lord plans to prosper you, not to harm you. You are an answer to prayer. You are here on a mission from God. I need you to hear this. I want you to be encouraged today. Okay. 
I don't want to get too far off the path because I got a lot to share with you today. So our, our scripture verse that we've, that we've been using one more time, Ephesians 4, 17 through 31, and I'm going to re be reading from the New Living Translation, Living as Children of Light. This scripture is great because it shows us uh, what it's like to, to live as a child of God and the things we need to unload so that we can get to that place. So here we go. With the Lord's authority, I say this, live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life which is corrupted by lust and deception. Oh, there's a lot of deception going around right now, church. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and your attitudes. I want to say that again. Let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. That's worth repeating. Put on the new nature. Put it on. That means you've got to do something. You've got to take it. You've got to pick it up. You've got to put it on. Come on, somebody. Created to be like God. This is serious now. You were created to be like God. Every one of you listening, every one of you within, within earshot, and if you're sitting there with your children, tell them, you were created to be like God. That's powerful. Truly righteous and holy. Stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all parts of the same body. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. How many of you know we're seeing that today, that anger is given a foothold to the devil? Cities are burning because of anger. Uh, and, and some of it, it, none of it is justified. Uh, they have a right to be angry over certain situations, but, but the, the destruction is never justified. Uh, come on, somebody. If you're a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good hard work. And then give generously to others in need. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. We're called to be encouragers. Come on. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own. Guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words and slander as well as all types of evil behavior. Lord, we just thank you for your word, and we give you glory, honor, and praise. Help me to preach this word with Holy Spirit power. In Jesus' name, amen. So remember, when we started this, I told you there are three stages to maturity in Christ. It begins with salvation, which is the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, and uh, you become this new creation, and you get free membership, uh, what I like to say, in God's gym. And that's why we're told, uh, that we're told uh, to call, and we are called to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. It's a workout. It's a workout in God's gym. It means Jesus did all of this so that you get saved, but now everything from this point on is up to you. And the next thing we have to do when we start taking this step is the sanctification process. It's being set apart for God. And with that comes a baptism, uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit and growing in knowledge. So with that being said, what's next is what we're preaching on today is justification. Now justification is studying and trusting in the scriptures, developing intimacy with the Godhead, and growing in faith, prayer, obedience, praise. Uh, let's, uh, let me take a look at 2 Peter 1, 5 through 7. It talks about fruitful growth in the faith. This is from the New King James now. It says, but also for this very reason, given all diligence, Add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. Are you seeing it? It tells us to add to your faith. Come on, it took faith to say the prayer, and now you're going to be adding to it because you want to grow, and you want to be moving forward. You want to 
Uh, you, right now, you got this very strong leg of salvation, and you got this little leg of salvation and this little leg of justification, and you want to start building that up so that, come on now, how many of you want to see fire in your life? I'm talking Holy Ghost fire. This is what we're talking about today. So sanctification and justification are actually linked hand in hand, and they're continuous throughout your lifetime. And as we take this journey of faith, we set ourselves apart for God to discover his plan and purpose for our lives, to be like God. And in that, we're co-laboring with Holy Spirit in an ongoing adventure of discovery. This is exciting. And each one of you is called to take this journey. Yeah. And many are called, but few are chosen. That's what the word says. Oh, that's a whole other day. I'll, I'll preach on that another time. But we're invited to participate and each of us will grow at our own pace as we press on toward the upward call of Christ. We're reminded in 2 Peter 1, 3 through 4, that his divine power, let's talk about Holy Spirit here for a second, has given to, all, uh, to us all, the, all things that pertain to life and godliness. You've already been given the opportunity to give you everything you need for life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, and through these we may be partakers of the divine nature, which means that everything that he is, we are. Come on, somebody. Having escaped the, corrupt, the corruption that is in the world through lust. It all comes down to this. It all comes down to lust, whether it's a lust for things, a lust for bodies. It, it really does come down to that. It's amazing. So for the last part of our four-part series, we'll be examining the four stages of sanctification slash justification because they work together hand in hand now. As you grow in sanctification, uh, being set apart for God and, and growing in that area, you become more justified. Now I'm going to explain to you how that happens. So let's take a look at the first stage. Sanctification, justification has a definite beginning at regeneration. Somebody say salvation. There you go. See, in the beginning, we transition from being sinners being transformed into saints, being transformed into saints. 1 John 3, 9 says, no one born of God makes a practice of sinning. Come on now, we're talking about willful sin. For God's seed abides in him now. And he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. And what that scripture is saying is, and I know from personal experience, even if I wanted to sin, and sometimes I did. Come on, somebody. I'm, I'm being as transparent as I can. But what happened when I sinned, I felt so terrible. I had a conscience now. And I knew it wasn't right, and it wasn't pleasing God. And I, I, I repented and asked him to forgive me. And, and he always, because of what he did on the cross, the answer is always yes, of course I will. But I, I, I don't go keeping on sinning. I, I, don't, I don't need to do that anymore. I have the seed of God in me and the strength to keep from sinning. Come on, somebody. This seed that, that the scripture is talking about is Holy Spirit himself. Because Holy Spirit convicts, not condemns, uh, condemns the sin that we're living. Uh, it's, it's no longer our nature. Our human spirit has been invaded by the spirit of God through Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. I'm talking to somebody out there. See, the finished work on the cross is what defines us. Paul speaks to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians 6, 11 and says, but you were washed, you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. The washing is being covered by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The blood that Jesus shed, it's like this veil that, that, that covers us, and, and it's almost like an outfit. <laughs> and so when we come before Almighty God and he looks at us, he sees the blood of his son, that we're carrying that. He says, you know what? When he sees us, he sees his son, and we are acceptable in his eyes. Come on, we are justified. Ha, hallelujah. And we can approach his throne with boldness. And we have the right to be called children of God according to the scriptures. He is known to us as Abba, Father. Come on. And in Hebrews 4, 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Right now, the world is in a time of need. It may even be you as an individual. And God is saying, as a child of God, you have the authority to, to, to just come before me in the throne room with boldness in your time of need that you can obtain the mercy and grace that you need. Come on, somebody. 
The second stage of sanctification justification is to know that it increases throughout life, as stated in my opening. The New Testament shows sanctification at the beginning, or regeneration, or salvation, but also as a process through our lives. 1 Peter 1.15 in the New King James says, But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Be holy in all your conduct. He's talking about your lifestyle. We have to change the way we were. We cannot go on living the way we were. We're new. We're brand new. The old is gone. The, the, the new has come. Come on, somebody. Holiness embraces purity and, and moral integrity. Those called to be God's children are to be like him. Remember what we read in Ephesians? We're, we're called to be like God. Peter reinforces this command by citing Leviticus. In Leviticus 11, 44 through 45, 19, 2, and 20 and 7, it, it goes on to say, consecrate yourselves. Be holy for he's holy. It's all in his confirmation. It's tying the Old Testament to the New Testament. Look them up for yourselves. I'll just read the, the last one here. Leviticus 20 and 7. Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy. For I am the Lord your God. See, the basic idea of holiness in the Bible is that of separation from all that is profane. The developed sense of holiness includes various meanings which uh, purify, sanctify, separate from, uh, dedicate. And the simplest definition of holiness is that of conformity to God's commands and to his Son. I like what it says in 1 John 2, 4 through 6. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought to himself also to walk just as he walked. Did you hear that? Just as Jesus walked on the face of this earth, we, as his disciples, even no matter how far along in our training, we're supposed to begin to walk like him. <laughs> oh, and a lot comes with that. A lot of responsibility, but also a lot of authority. And somebody say power. So the third stage of sanctification, justification, it's completed at death. Now, this is interesting to know. At death for our souls right and when the Lord returns for our bodies hallelujah because at death our souls are united with Christ and then at the rapture when it comes our bodies will be raised up and glorified come on somebody see our sanctification will never be completed in this life because there's still sin that remains in our hearts even though we are followers of Christ until we receive our glorified bodies we will not be perfected and finally free from our sin nature. I need a drink of water. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, even for just the water that we drink. We often speak this at funerals from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 53 and 54. It talks about our bodies. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Come on, somebody, that's some exciting stuff. And lastly, stage four, sanctification, justification is never completed in this life. We have to be cautioned against false teachers. There are some that, that preach perfectionism. We're not called to be perfect. God understands that he knows us, but we strive toward perfection. Everything we do is upward in motion. Everything we do is to become more like Christ, to be, become more like God. We will never achieve that. Come on, somebody. But it's a goal, and as we go, we grow, we mature. And as, that, as, those, as those legs uh, begin to increase, come on, we, we see the fire begin to build in our lives. The Holy Spirit fire where we're able to do things that we never could do before, think things we could never think before. 
have the mind of Christ. Somebody say hallelujah. <sighs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to walk past all of this stuff. Let's talk about God's role and man's role in the sanctification, justification process. So God's role. It's important to understand that sanctification is primarily a work of God. In 1 Thessalonians 5.23, it says to us, we're reminded by the Apostle Paul, may the God of peace himself sanctify you holy. That's W-H, not H-O. W-H, holy, which means completely. And Philippians 2.13, God is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. How about the role of God the Son, Jesus Christ? In sanctification, is first that Jesus himself earned our sanctification for us. Jesus is our wisdom, our righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. And also Jesus is our example to follow. What about the role of God, the Holy Spirit? He works within us to change us and sanctify us, giving us greater holiness of life. Paul tells us to walk by the Spirit and be led by the Spirit. See, Holy Spirit produces the fruit of the Spirit, and we are more responsive to the desires and promptings of Holy Spirit in our life and character. So now man's role. Our role is both passive and active in sanctification and justification. The passive role is we depend on God to sanctify us, and the active role is that we strive to obey God and take steps that will increase our sanctification slash justification. Come on now, somebody. Let me give you some examples in Scripture. The passive role in Romans 6.13, yield yourselves to God as men who have been brought from death to life. Romans 12.1, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Are you seeing this? We are surrendering to him and his work. Romans 8, 13, if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of body, you will live. Are you seeing this? This is the passage. This is when we just surrender and, and give everything to God. But here's the active role. If by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Come on, now it comes into pass, it comes into active now. And Philippians 2, 12 through 13, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Well, God is at work in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. See, that's us doing the walk. That's us doing the work. That's us going to God's gym. Come on, somebody. So let's see if we can't start wrapping this up. So what are the ways in which we grow in holiness, maturity, and obedience? We begin to read and meditate on the word of God. Our prayer life increases. We really love to corporately worship. Come on, so I love going to church. I love worshiping God, but there's nothing like going to church and singing with the brothers. We're witnessing. We're sharing the gospel with others, people we love, people we don't even, even strangers, looking for opportunities. We really desire Christian fellowship. And come on, now this is the most important one. We begin to live with self-discipline and self-control. Hallelujah. If you look at the fruit of the Spirit, it begins with love, the nine, the nine pieces of the fruit, and it ends with self-control. That's how we know we've made it. So this is Communion Sunday this Sunday. We will be having communion at church. So what sanctification and justification affects, it affects our intellect, our emotions, our will, our spirit, and our physical bodies. I want to close with one final scripture from 1 Thessalonians 5.23. May the God of peace himself sanctify you wholly, and may your spirit and soul and your body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord God, for your word. Thank you for this teaching. We want to see a mature church we want to see mature Christians. We want that triangle to build just like the fire triangle with, the, with, the, with, uh, with oxygen and fuel and temperature. And, and the more that increases, the bigger the fire. And as, as we, we build on our, our salvation, our regeneration, and add to it our sanctification and our justification, we build a fire, a Holy Spirit fire within. And as that fire grows, we become more effective 
and we can bring heaven down to earth. We can see the signs, miracles, and wonders. We can lay hands on the sick and they will be made well. We can cast out demons. Come on, somebody. I'll even go to step. We can raise the dead. I, we're not limiting God and what he wants to do because we're called to be like God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, here we go. Let's pray. So, Heavenly Father, I pray that this teaching has touched someone's life. And that through it, they say, you know what? I want to be that mature, that mature Christian. I, 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 I want so desperately to draw closer to you and to know the gifts and the plans and the purposes and the assignment that you have for my life. So, Lord, I surrender myself to you and to your commands. And, Lord, help me to be obedient to your word. Be obedient to Holy Spirit and just love you and grow with you and fulfill the assignment that you have for me in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Now, once again, I don't want to miss an opportunity to, uh, to pray for you. If you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you want to become part of God's family to be able to receive all of these gifts and these promises of God, it begins with a simple prayer, as I said before. <clears throat> Let me take a sip. <clears throat> and the prayer is simply this. As it says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. So here's the prayer. I want you to pray this with me. You mean it with everything in you. Say, dear Jesus, I've sinned. And I believe you died for my sins. And I believe you rose again on the third day. So dear Jesus, forgive my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. In your name I pray. The name above all names. The name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. If you prayed that, I tell you what, there is a party going on in heaven right now. But I thank you for listening. I hope you got something out of this. Continue to pray for my buddy Rob. And we're going to be praying over a prayer cloth this Sunday. We're going to send him a prayer cloth. Yeah. And uh, we believe in the healing. We believe the healing is already taking place. We love you, Rob. And uh, I love you. So until we see each other again, 